Hey there, Van Again Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Van Again. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you guys had a great 4th of July. Um, I sent out a email thing on 4th of July. So I hope you guys got that. Just basically saying thanks to everybody that made 4th of July happen, which is all of our forefathers and all the stuff they did. And then, of course, all of our people keeping us safe right now. And so anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. We're ha going to have a good time here on our stream today. I hope. Hope you guys come and uh, when you come in, just let us know, you know, who you are, where you're from. We have people coming in from all over the world. So, you know, just uh, say hi in the chat. We'll try to say hi back and all that good stuff. All right. So hope you guys had a great 4th of July. Got a chance to... Use your van, work on your van, look at your van as it's parked in the driveway. Something to do with your van. Uh, and now it's the time of year where people get serious. They are ready for their trips and things they're doing. And so, of course, during that time period, if you guys need anything parts-wise, feel free to call on us at Van Again. We'll be glad to help you out. The new website has been doing great. I definitely appreciate you guys um, helping us out by supporting us and taking good care of us. And it's always, always appreciated. Um, I just had a few things I wanted to talk about today. First thing I wanted to talk about again, I guess this is the third time I'm talking about this, is the Volkswagen IDR, a, a fully electric race car that got to like won the Pikes Peak record, I think by 10 seconds. I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overestimating. Uh, I got to see a video today of a chase helicopter that was chasing the IDR and, and watching it go up Pikes Peak. It was very extremely impressive. Okay? I mean, this is a vehicle that not only can go really fast, it can also go accelerate extremely fast and if you haven't had a chance to watch that video on youtube definitely watch it it's about eight minutes long it's not a long video um the car engine sounds like a cross between a hair dryer and a drill and pretty much every other annoying electrical appliance you can possibly imagine but i think that's good because that way you know everybody hears it coming and can get out of the way so <laughs> I think it may, might have been intentional. Like maybe they just had that noise, like on a like a CD or MP3 or something. Um, and yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> that thing makes some. It's a hideous sound that it makes, but at least you know it's coming, and you better get out of the way. Uh, if you ever, I've never actually watched one of the Plague Speak races before, and I'll tell you what, man. Just driving up that thing with a car normally, it would be crazy driving up there something that can go over 200 miles an hour uh wow yep so it was super impressive and volkswagen is making hay out of it uh i say they have good cause to like i said last week they built that car in nine months from nothing so you know that's a little impressive that's also impressive what would they what would happen if they had had a year or a couple years right well we'll find out next year because they'll probably do it again and uh we'll see what happens so definitely take a look at that when you get a chance uh it's good to see steve deruder in the chat good to see aj from san antonio in the chat i was talking to him earlier today i think yes i think he called me um <laughs> and i just got on the phone with somebody like two seconds ago so they might be here i don't know that uh calling for help and things that way uh, another thing I wanted to point out, okay, now this is a while back. Some of you guys have to go back into your vault of your of your mind. Uh, we talked about the fact that Volkswagen is discontinuing the, the new Beetle, supposedly. Yeah, that's what they were saying. We're discontinuing the new Beetle, and we're bringing in these new ID cars that are going to be our new electric, you know, baseline cars and that kind of thing, and they're going to be rear-wheel drive. So I was kind of saying at the time, 
This is like a stupid idea. Let's get rid of the bug, the new beetle, and at the exact moment, we're bringing in a platform that you could put a new beetle onto that would be rear-wheel drive, possibly consider it rear engine. I mean, it would be so many, like, tips of the hat to the old beetle. Um, it's not funny. And so I was lamenting that. I was telling Volkswagen, you know, in this show, definitely don't get rid of the new Beetle. Use it as a electronic electrical car platform jumping off point. And apparently they listened. They were, you know, they were watching over there. Like, I right, guess he has a good point. Do it. Okay, so uh, Heinrich went back over there. And now they're talking about electric-powered new Beetle. Okay, but there's another wrinkle into the. It couldn't just be that easy. Okay, it couldn't just be that easy. It has to be electric powered four door new vehicle. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, doke. Hey, Chuck, how you doing, buddy? So, electric powered four door new beetle. Uh, all right, here's the only way that I could see this would be cool because four dooring a new a new beetle. Okay. If you go online, there's some pictures. Actually, I was reading an article about this in this Jalopnik today that uh, I tell you guys about all the time. If you're into car stuff and things, and Volkswagen stuff and things, you definitely want to check out Jalopnik's site. The guy that runs it is a VW guy, and he does all kinds of car news and things. So he was talking about the Volkswagen says, you know, where they might do this electric new Beetle, but it's going to be four-door. Were there ever any four-door Beetles in the day, right? What do you guys think? Was there ever any four-door Beetles that were made? Uh, well, if you go on Jalopnik's site, you can find out that the short answer is yes, there were. Okay, uh, They actually made them in Germany originally. Uh, I think it was Hebmuller made them as police vehicles. Because, you know, the big issue with beetles and new beetles is the fact they're two door so you can't really use them <coughs> conveniently for a police car for a taxi okay and believe me these are two types of vehicle that you want to be able to sell if you are a car manufacturer because you sell a lot of these vehicles so volkswagen made these police cars they built the Beatles, they sent them to Hebmuller, they modified them to have back doors and also a canvas top. Not sure exactly why you would want a police car to have a convertible top on it. They said some of the doors in the back were actually canvas. So again, you know, if criminals had a sharp knife, <laughs> they might be able to get away. I don't understand. But, uh, so that was the thing that happened. They said, actually, there was weird because Volkswagen, if you set aside the bus and, you know, the bus family, all their vehicles were two-door vehicles until sometime during the 60s when they started coming out with the Type 3 and the Type 4. Uh, you know, the square back and notch back and all those other... I think it was actually uh, Type 4, which was even these sedans they didn't even really sell much of here. They were trying to get into, you know, the upper scale car market, and yeah, it never worked out that great back then. But for all those years, like all their cars were just two door uh, until you know got to a certain point. Their first four door car, though, was actually not the bus; uh, it was the Kuba wagon. Okay, so I'm giving you guys like a whole history of this situation. The Kuba wagon. Uh, which was a war, you know, like a Jeep type vehicle. You guys probably have seen it on some uh, World War II movies, or if you haven't seen that on World War II movies, maybe you've seen a Volkswagen thing that some person has got at a car show. Same exact thing. Uh, except, you know, looking similar. I mean, not the same as far as anything else, but it looks it looks similar. So that was one of their, that was their first four-door car they made. Um, and yeah. All right, so... So here's my idea. Okay, new Beetle. Redo the body a little bit. Four doors. Okay, but two, the back two doors are suicide. Okay, back two doors. You gotta make it cool. Why would you build it 
Why would you build something like that? You're building it for the splash effect of it. You're building it for the buzz effect of it. The call in this, the bus one, the buzz ID, right? Why? Because you're making a buzz, okay, with this vehicle. Kind of cash in on this old, uh, all the people that liked it back in the day. So, you're going to make a new Beetle. It's going to be four-door. has to be four-door. Suicide doors for the back. Uh, it would be doable, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Crash testing is weird, but I think it could happen. If you guys have any ideas about the new Beetle electric whatever, you can put them in the chats or the comments. And, you know, whatever. It's fine. You don't have, or you don't have to say anything because, you know, you can just be entertained. All right, now, let's move along. So, I know a lot of you guys have been going on the new website. We have a new feature that we just got introduced um, last week called the wish list feature. Okay, and you guys have been using that. I'm going to go onto the screen share deal. And, and it's going to get weird for a second until I can get over to the actual screen I want to share, which is this. <clears throat> so, you guys have been using the wish list feature. Okay, what the wish list feature is, it's hard to say that, you know that? Wish list feature. All right, see these square headlight protector things right here? Say you want some of them. So you click on this little heart deal, then it says you have to log in to use the wish list feature. That means you basically, to use it, you have to have an account. Okay, so you go up here, and you log into an account, or you make an account, or whatever, uh, and then you can use it. And when you click on something, that little heart deal on it, it puts it into your wish list. And then, like, later on, if you don't have the money right now, people come on here all the time. They're, like, looking around. They're seeing, you know, something they might want in the future. They can just click on this little heart. It'll put it in their wish list. And then, like, later on, it could be, you know, weeks from now, months from now, whatever. Um, it can, it'll still be in there. And you can just click a button. It actually moves it into your cart. Okay, So I would definitely take advantage of that right there. Uh, the other thing I would take advantage of, let me see if I can show it to you real quick. I have my wife, I actually have a fake account thing for her. Uh, let's see, I can't remember if it's under this one or this one. I don't know. Let me see if I can log into it. See, I can say I planned this out really good. If I can log into that real quick, I probably got the password wrong or something. No, of course not. All right, let me try one more time. Ah, of course. I'm, I'm showing you how the website won't let you log in. <laughs> Unless you have the proper password. I don't know why it never remembers that password. It usually always remembers it. Hey, you know, here's my wife. Her address is in Austria, apparently. Um, <laughs> but you can see over here the wish list. Okay, click on it. Right now it says, you know, add products to the wish list. If I go to here, to something... I want these keys. I want this headlight switch. Okay. I want all that stuff. Then when I go back to my wish list right here, um, or I go to my account right here, bam. Okay. Here's the wish list. Bam. One day it'll come in. Yeah. See, and everything's right here. And then you can just add them to the car or you can add all the car. Okay. So that's how that works now. But there is another feature I would like to point out to you guys today. Okay. So when you're on here, you're buying stuff. Okay, why not get rewards? Okay, why not get rewards, right? You're on here, you're buying stuff, you're doing things. Now, number one, so we have points and rewards over here. I wanted to point this out because this is something that will actually you can earn points and you can buy stuff with it. Okay, who doesn't like that, right? I like flying on airplanes, you get points, eventually you get a free airplane ticket. Okay, uh, if you spend enough money on in the website, you eventually could buy something with it. So you sign up okay, for your user account, you get 10 points. You buy stuff, for every dollar that you spend, you get a point. Okay, So right now, my wife has got 68 points in her account. Uh, right here, it totals it, okay, good. And you know, then when you go to buy something, and you can, you know, let's, let's go to the wish list again, we can view all. We can add it to the cart. Bam. Nailed it. 
Okay. And then we go to our cart. There should be a place here because I know people have been using the, the, the points like crazy. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Use 68 points for a $3.40 discount in this order. So see, you can just click this apply discount. So what happens is you get points. You can either use them right away. You can stockpile them. Each point is basically worth five, five cents, I believe. Okay. And so uh, as you're accruing these points, you're getting the point where you can get money back off your order. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is people, you know, use the site every single day. They, I'm going to go back to looking at me now. Uh, people use the site every single day. They don't like log in as a user. They don't make a user account. Some of them buy like hundreds of dollars worth of items. Uh, and basically they're just throwing that money away. Okay. They're throwing that money away. So, you know, in a way, why should I care? Right. Why should I care? Well, because I'm trying to help you. Okay. I'm trying to help you out. If you're going to be coming here, if you're going to be a loyal customer to us, you might as well, you know, benefit from that. And so the points is a way to do that. Uh, some of our customers have already used them to get like significant money off of their stuff. And so, you know, it's just something I wanted to mention uh, in case you guys, you know, were going to buy like a big order of stuff and things, you would be getting a ton of points through that. All right. So that is the points thing. Uh, another thing that is hopefully going to happen by next week, every, you know, every week we get our site like a little bit more closer to what I want it to be. Um, and so one of the things that I noticed the other day in the back end, I was looking in the back end of the site and there was a thing that says testimonials. Okay. So on the old site, we had started using that rivet works, right? You guys talked about, <laughs> do I get points? Yeah, Chuck, you get a, a good a smile and a thumbs up for me. That's your, all your points you get. Um, <laughs> the points are for the website people. I'm sorry, but that's the way it works. Um, so, and you get to interact with me, right? That's, that's positive. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'll let you take a swim in the swimming pool when you come over. Um, all right. What was I talking about now? <laughs> I got completely distracted. Oh yeah. I was noticing in the backs, in the background of the site, on the back side, there was a testimonial part. We had our rivet works thing set up right on the old site where people could, you know, talk to us about purchases they made and talk to us about like what they liked about them and that kind of thing. Uh, or just talk about how, you know, our service and what we're doing for them. And I just, I like that because people were putting, giving us all kinds of cool pictures and all kinds of cool, you know, little things about their trips and things that they're doing with the parts. And so we're going to have a testimonial thing on the site again. Uh, it's going to be on the front page of the, of the site. And I'm going to try to make it so that if you do post, you know, your testimonial in there, that you get some points for that. That's why I mentioned the points first. Okay. So in other words, you get something from us like uh, AJ from San Antonio got these LED uh, light bulbs that he liked and he really thought they were great. I mean, you could do a testimonial on that, and he could earn, you know, maybe 20 points or something uh, for putting that on there. I, I'm not sure how much points we're going to give. I'm, I'm going to give enough so people, you know, want to do it and do it as often as possible. So if you look on the site right now, it looks like they did start working on it. <laughs> if you go down below, like the featured items area, there's a thing that says, see what our customers say. And it's just got some random words there and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's not really real testimonials. That's just like, you know, uh, them doing it as a placeholder. I'm not really sure why they did that. And then they went home for the weekend. <laughs> and so, gee, thanks for that. You know, every the entire weekend, people are going to be looking at that and going, what in the heck is that? But whatever. I mean, I can't really change it or do anything about it. That, I don't think they've given me the ability to change those pictures. I, there is a testimonial thing in the back end, but it's not activated, I don't think. I put a test testimonial in the other day, and, uh, you know, <laughs> okay, I appreciate it, Steve. 
that I put a test testimonial in there the other day and it didn't go anywhere. It didn't do anything. So then I got a hold of the devs. I'm like, where is, where are these testimonials going? Like, do they go anywhere? And they're like, Oh no, no, that was something that we put on the site when you were, before you approved it. And then you just never approved that part of it. I'm like, I don't remember you even asking me about that part. <laughs> so, oh, get a, yeah, Steve is going to review review the butt off of an Ente boot or something. So that's good. I hope the butt of it stays on because it's not that old. But so anyway, so this is a new part, a testimonial part. I mean, Billy Shepard, I don't think he's on here today, but he sent me like the last one he did on the Rivet Works. He probably had like, 15 pictures and it was like all these places where he had went with his van and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, that was great. And some of the pictures, I put one of his pictures on the main site. Now, if you sit there and let the slideshow thing happen or you click on the slideshow at the very last one is this crazy, like stylized route 66 painting Escher photo or something picture thing he did. And, uh, you know, that's just one of the pictures he sent me. It's pretty awesome. So I'm, I have big hopes for this. You know, again, it's really just more of a way to, you know, connect with you guys and let me know when you guys appreciate stuff. You, you know, you know, I always appreciate you folks and that kind of thing. So, so we, you know, we definitely appreciate it. All right. Does anybody that's on here right now, I know we only have like five people on here. Uh, did you guys get a notification earlier today that we were going to do a stream? I, I did a thing about, I don't know, probably, it was this morning, so probably like around 11 that we were going to do a stream today. I don't know if anybody got it or not. So I'm just trying to see, you know, I want to get the most people here we can get. But anyway, you know, uh... All right, so let me move on. So does anybody have any questions about their van or van gun questions? I'll be trying to answer them. AJ says, nope. Oh, he didn't get one. Okay, yeah. I don't know what. So in order to get the notification, there's this little bell thing somewhere on, like, if you go to our page and you subscribe, that's not enough. Okay, I don't understand why YouTube is like that. You also have to click this corny little bell that's notification bell in the corner. Then you get notifications, okay? So, so if you haven't did that, I would say do that. That should hopefully let you get them in the future. Chuck says he didn't get anything. He's been here for multiple times. So, yeah, maybe what I'll do instead is maybe I'll send out the uh, newsletter and try to, like, remind people that way. That might be more effective. Um, I don't know if you guys got our 4th of July newsletter we sent out on 4th of July. <laughs> A bunch of people got it. We have like 2,800 people on our mailing list. And a bunch of people got it. A bunch of people opened it. But anyway. All right. So, uh, and, you know, I guess let me talk for a minute. Okay, I know Peter Benici is going to love this part because he loves when I go off the rails and talk about crazy stuff. All right. Here's what's going on. Okay. Now, I, I, gotta, I should let, just let this go. I had, I had so many good interactions with customers this week. I've had people calling me saying, thanks for this, thanks for that. I had people come here, get stuff, say thanks for having this here, thanks for having... And, you know, really, for me, it's not about, like, you know, people saying thanks. I, I'm trying to help people out, okay? Uh, you know, when, what makes me happy is I sell something that you need, it helps you, and it also helps me. And that's it. It's like a win-win situation. That's what I want. Okay, that's what I'm trying for. Um, there's times when, you know, I don't. When I order things for people, and then something happens, it's not the right thing, or they need to return it for some reason, or you know, something out of the ordinary happens. Um, you know, we take we take a loss on that. Right? We take a loss on that, and that's fine. That's part of business. Okay, that's part of business. Um, and, you know, like this winter, we had a guy that wanted some new pistons. He was rebuilding his Eurovan engine. He wanted some new pistons for his engine. Um, if you know anything about those engines, which I know a little bit about them, they had two different versions of the five-cylinder. 
and they're actually different. So there's an AAF and there's an ACU, and I he had the later one, which was the basically more rare version. We were trying to get him the pistons that he needed. I had a source in Europe that sent me. We needed oversized ones, so he sent me standard ones, and it was about. I don't know, uh, eight hundred dollars. Okay, so they were wrong. I I ate that. They're sitting here on the shelf. Am I gonna sell them? Eh, one day at some point. Okay. Uh, so then I ordered the oversized. I'm like, listen, dude, I need these oversized, and they need to be specifically for this particular motor. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. I understand also. So he sent me another set oversized. They're for the AAF motor. They're not for the ACU. Neither one was for the ACU. And one was regular and one was oversized. So now I have two sets, two $800 things sitting here. Um, and the guy's like, listen, I'm just going to go with these cheapy Mexican ones, which I could have gotten him originally. Um, I'm going to try them. Because basically there was no choice at that point. And I got to get them from this other person. So, you know, I just need all this stuff back. And that's fine. So we did it. Okay. Uh, we did it. It's in the midst. Uh, it was in the midst of our slowest time of the year. Okay. No money. Not much money coming in. Now I have $1,600 worth of paperweights. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, you know, that happens sometimes. That happens sometimes. We'll buy items that we think are going to be cool and awesome and do a lot of work and stuff and things. And it's just not really, it doesn't really pan out. Okay. But we do all this stuff because we're into the van scene. We want to help you guys out. We want to, you know, do the latest and greatest stuff and that kind of thing. Okay. But then there's lots of stuff that we sell that we actually make money on. Okay. That's how you stay in business for 20 years. Next month is going to be 20 years for us of being in the Vanagon community and also selling parts to the Vanagon community. So uh, that is going to be great. We're going to try to celebrate some of that stuff next month. Okay. But the reality is if I don't make money off of a part, uh, I don't, I can't stay in business. Okay. If I don't make money off of a part, I can't feed my family. I can't, you know, put food on the table and that kind of thing. And so most people understand that. Okay. Most people say, hey, I'm in business. I know what it's all about. I know what you're talking about. And, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, begrudge you this or begrudge you that. But what happens is every once in a while, okay, we'll do something to help out a customer. Uh, they're in an emergency situation. They need something really fast. and Or, you know, it's just this is the best, fastest, cheapest, whatever way to get the, the thing to them at the moment. And so we do that. And... The thing shows up perfectly on time. They need it. Exactly the thing that they need. But there's a slight problem. In the box, okay, there is a slip that says how much I paid for it. Or they can go on a website that they see on the box or something, and they see how much I paid for it. And then on top of that, okay, so this, this happens occasionally. Most of the time, nobody says anything. Okay, and the reason why they don't say anything, I feel like, is because they realize this is how money is made. Like you buy something for X amount of dollars, you sell it for X amount of dollars, and you have to like it has to be more than what you bought it for. Okay, but occasionally you get that person, right? Oh, I could have bought this, and you know, saved this money. And, you know, you are just a terrible human being. Really. I mean, I had this conversation via email. You know, most of the time it's not via phone. Via email. Uh, I can't believe that, you know, you got this thing for me and it cost a lot less than what you sold it for. Okay. And that's just, you're just ripping me off. Okay. Uh, but here's the, like I said, here's the problem. That I'm not Walmart. 
Okay, I can't buy an entire warehouse. I mean, there is actually a whole bunch of stuff here, but I can't buy like an entire warehouse of, you know, something, some product, so that I can save ten dollars off of each one, so that when you come along, the price of it, I can sell it to you at like a wholesale level. Okay, see some of these occasionally, not a whole lot with buying on stuff, but occasionally there's a part that they sell enough of or whatever. Or they can sell that part at a wholesale level to the public. Okay? And they have a huge warehouse and they're selling these things. They're blowing these things out the doors. Maybe they're making, I don't know, 15% off of them or something because they're doing so much volume. I don't know what their, their thing is. Okay? For us, we need to make at least 30% off of each item to make it worthwhile. Uh, if I can do more than that and still be competitive with other people, I do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so occasionally I'll, you know, I'll be lower than people, but I'm just trying to, again, make it a win-win situation for everybody. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, if something like that happens, you see something like that, please understand there is no malicious intent going on. There is no I got you situation going on. Um, it's just me trying to do the best job I can to get you the stuff. And believe me, it takes a lot of work sometimes to hunt down things, hunt down items. Uh, I spend hours on the computer like I had today. Customer got up touch with me, said they needed an accelerator cable for a Eurovan. Okay, that's easy, right? Nope. <laughs> there is none. In the U.S., okay, uh, and you know I had to search and search and search. I finally found one that I think is going to work, but I'm not 100% sure, and I need to do more research on it. Uh, you know, I mean, you could do all that. You could spend hours and hours and hours online looking up parts, and even at the end of the day, you still wouldn't really know if you're getting the right thing or not. You know, uh, with me, I do all that work, and then if somehow it comes in, and it's not the right thing. Guess what happens to it? I eat it. Okay. Uh, if you do it, then you eat it. And believe me, some of these parts you have to get from Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Germany, France, England, all this other stuff. Uh, so sending it back, yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay, that's not going to happen. So uh, you know, I'm trying. I'm not trying to be a downer, guys. I'm just trying to give you guys an insight. Okay, into doing business for 20 years with people. Like I said, I appreciate you folks and the people that are here on the stream. I appreciate all the people that are going to be listening to the stream tonight, tomorrow, all that stuff. And, you know, you guys understand this stuff, okay? The Vanagon world is not the place where you become rich, okay? The Vanagon world is not the place that you want to be a scammer because it's a tight-knit community. If you're scamming people... They're going to find out about it, and you're going to be gone, okay, most likely. Uh, and so, you know, it is a community where people help each other out. They look out for each other and that kind of thing. You know, this person, I got super mad and was all bent out of shape. Um, I had been chatting with them through the website. I had been, you know, helping them via emails and stuff, and they were occasionally doing an order, right? And everything was going good until this event happened where they decided, you know, this one particular part was too, I made too much money on it, so now I'm a dirty rat. <laughs> okay. So, anyway. Um, and then he even lied and said that he could get this part plus this other part, which is you can't get anywhere except from Germany, from this super cheapy Bobo website. And, you know just to try to make me look even worse. Like, I'm, oh, I not only ripped you up on this, but this other part, well, yeah, the second part he bought, there's no way you can possibly get it unless you're getting it from Europe. So, yeah, good luck on that. All right, so I'm off of that rant now. Peter Benici, it's all your fault. You told me to ramble on, so I'm rambling on. Uh, the rest of you guys, I haven't seen any uh, questions because that would have definitely made me, you know, stop... Uh, that ramble. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you guys don't have any questions, then, you know, let me know. If people watching this tomorrow, tonight, let me know what you guys think, your comments. 
Um, and also, of course, on the whole idea of having the wish list, the points, and the testimonials. Okay. And if there's something else on the site you guys want to see, you know, I was looking on there too um, about, uh, oh yeah, Eric, thanks for the Eurovan or not. See, so believe me. Thanks for the Eurovan is on par with, or even harder to get than the air cooled vanning and stuff. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. I don't understand. But, uh, you know, this, uh, this stuff is for you guys. Okay. So let us know anything that we can do to make the website better. Okay, some new feature that could help be helpful. Um, if you want to show me an example, like send me an email or send me a message and give an example. Say, hey, check this out. This is a cool feature you guys should have on the site. You know, the guys that we have that are devs on the site, they, um, you know, they can do pretty much anything within limits. So if you see a cool feature on another site we should have, let me know and we will try to do it. Okay. Yeah, see that. Uh, hatch grommet is, you know, is coming is eventually. Uh, Chuck says, what is the best shock for a camper Westie? Uh, I think that people really like the Bilstein shocks. Uh, they also, there's a couple of different Bilstein shocks that are out there. They have the street version and they also have the uh, sport version. They have well, they have a heavy duty version like that of the yellow. Then they have the street version, which is a black. Um, and it really just depends on what kind of ride that you like. Some people really like a stiff ride. They would go for the yellow. Um, if you're going for the like a nicer ride, kind of closer to stock, you would go with the black ones. The black ones are less expensive than the yellow. Uh, I really prefer the black ones if it's me. So. Bilstein, to me, are the best shocks out there for, for anything. They're not the cheapest shocks, but they are they are the best, in my opinion. All right, now I said all that. Uh, when you come here, Chuck's coming here next week on the 11th, I think. Uh, don't buy any shocks yet because uh, you might I might give you a, a set of brand new shocks. See, there's your points. That'll be your points. Okay. Um, I had a customer bring a set of brand new shocks here that he bought and they're sitting here and i was thinking about who could need them so if you want a set of brand new shocks i will give you a set of them here okay there you go bang all right there's your points so now let's keep going uh any comments on rough idle that i should check beyond grounds once it warms up it's good but if i turn it off and on it does the same thing so yeah this is what aj was telling me about this earlier I mean, sometimes if it's having a rough idle when it's cold, uh, if you've done head work, which I think you told me you had just did some head work or some engine work. Sometimes if your uh, lifters, if your valve adjustment is too tight, you will have like a low manifold pressure because um, the oil pressure is higher when the car is cold. Okay. So the oil pressure is higher. The lifters are are affected by oil pressure. So if the oil pressure is really high, which it is on startup, it'll be 60 psi. Okay, uh, then it'll actually lower your manifold pressure until the oil warms up. Oil pressure drops down. Now your lifters aren't pumping up as much either, and you get a little bit better manifold pressure. So you might want to check your valve adjustment. Uh, that's a big issue that people have discussed for a long time. Bob Donalds, my friend, uh, talked about it for years and years, and then he finally got Bentley Manual to put a little addendum in there on it that if you're having, you know, uh, vacuum problems, you can adjust your valve, readjust your valve. So if you have a way to check your manifold pressure, your vacuum, maybe try that. And if you see anything weird, like low manifold pressure at startup, then you might want to readjust your valves. I like to adjust them to, like, just touching. Okay, so what they call zero lash. So the adjusters are just touching the valve stem and run it that way and see if it makes it run better. Sometimes it does. You're like, whoa, this thing idle has never idled right, like, from forever. And you readjust it, and it's like, oh, it idles great now. 
okay? Uh, and so you do it to just touching, and if it's idling great, working better, then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll adjust it to one 360-degree turn only. The book says two. It says two turns, but it doesn't really say two 180 turns or two full turns. So most people give it two full turns. I think sometimes that's too much. Okay. So yeah, take, check that out and see if that helps you out. All right. Is there any other questions? Now Chuck's happy. He's getting some free shocks. He's doing a dance over there. AJ's going to check his valve adjustment. That may be what's happening. Uh, we got one more person that showed up. Okay. Uh, and of course, what do you guys think about, oh, and I wanted to also mention, okay, it's in the title. I didn't even talk about it. Um, no, new Volkswagen camper. Okay. Let me pull that up real quick. If I can, we'll do us another screen share. Uh, so a while back, Volkswagen talked about this camper. Okay. Uh, and <clears throat> I thought it was basically what the Vanagon world would content would call vaporware. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not what the Vanagon world would call it. That's what I would call it. Vaporware, right? You guys know what vaporware is, right? It's like these awesome video games and, uh, computer programs and whatever that actually don't exist in real life. Get ready. Get out of there. So they talked about this camper probably a year ago, California XXL. Um, and I thought this thing is vaporware. It's got some really cool features. Um, and we talked about it on the stream a long time ago. But we'll, let's see. Is it going to do a slideshow? Of course not. It's just going to sit here like a dummy. But, oh, no. Okay. You're going to scroll down. So these are like some concept pictures. It does have, they didn't make a prototype one. You can see it's kind of a little weird. It sticks out back here. Uh, yeah. And so it's like longer than it's supposed to be. Uh, for, for reasons, it is pretty neat, though. It's got some cool features, like this pull-out shower bathroom thing, which, you know, that's an old idea, but whatever. We give them props for that. It's got this cool uh, stove where I think the eyes actually retract down into the stove, like the little cross steels. Yeah, see how they retract in? See, I remember this stuff. It's got this coffee maker. I don't know what that is. Coffee maker, maybe. There's this nice bed where you can sit up here, and it's like super frying hot and you're like sweating your guts out it's like a german swedish sauna up there um yeah, that's one thing people don't ever realize that much is these big humongous like sunroof things it's like a sweat shop i mean you know who wants that i just bought a canopy at my house so that i can sit on my porch without the sun coming in <laughs> you want to put a big huge window in there like oh you know whatever so this is a vehicle. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, this is a vehicle that actually is being produced. Okay, um, it is actually being made by, I believe, um, Westphalia. I think is what this one article was saying. Uh, so ooh, look at this. That's crazy. Uh, it's just a random Eurovan camper. And then these are Eurovans and stuff. What the crap? All right, whatever. All right, so let's back out of this. So this thing is getting, you know, getting made. Um, it, I don't think it's going to come here to the U.S. Of course not. Why? Why would? It, why would that happen? That would make, you know, actual sense. Look at this picture, man. Oh boy, gotta loves me some Aurora Borealis. But see these people got some super jackets on. All right, so <laughs> I'm getting off track here. Uh, so you know, we we'll, we we will probably never see this here. I don't know why they had to have 20 pictures of other Eurovans, but whatever. So it it's coming. It's going to be made. Um. And it's got all kinds of crazy things, at least the concept one had. So, you know, that's something to look forward to. 20 years from now, you'll see some great market ones here, and it'll be great. Okay. So that's happening. The Volkswagen XXL is supposedly no longer vaporware. It is going to be a real thing that's going to happen. All right. Let me get back out of this. Stop sharing again. Boom. And we'll go back. Okay. All right, so that's that's our show for today, guys. I know it's uh, not a whole hour, but oh, hey, uh, there's Jackbox. Wow. Okay, sweet. Uh, Jackbox is vis visiting us from the UK, and so it's probably like super ridiculously late there right now. It's probably staying up 
after his bedtime. But we're glad to have him with us. Also, AKA Cove Kid. Uh, he's got some cool videos. You guys get a chance to take a look at his channel. You can do that. Also, uh, I'll put a plug in for uh, 8090 uh, Volkswagen Club. Yeah, it's uh, near 10 o'clock over there. 8090 Club in the UK. I always try to plug those guys uh, because they're cool. And they tried to help me on our on our site. I still haven't gotten uh, an order from the UK yet. And believe me, uh, Jackbox, I will refund you. <laughs> I asked him. I asked him before to try to make an order from the UK. I've asked the people on the eighty ninety club to try to make an order from the UK. I will refund. It's a put it in the thing that it's a test order. I will refund you and do it through PayPal. I will refund you, or you can do a credit card now because the credit card thing is working good now. Uh, I just want to see if it'll work. I've been getting orders from Australia. They've been working good. Been getting orders from Canada. They've been working good. I haven't gotten any UK orders since we did the new site, and I'm concerned that it's not that it's not working. Okay, I can't really do it here because I'm not from the UK. Now I had a, a person from Austria said they were trying to do one. They couldn't do it. That's why my wife's uh, fake account that I made for her actually had an Austrian address because I was trying to like fake do an Austrian order. It didn't work. Then it actually did work after they fixed it. So, you know, same thing with the UK stuff. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, see if I can, um, you know, I want to see if it works. <laughs> you know, my, my dev team are great, but I'll tell you what they like to do. They will do stuff. They're like, okay, we did this new feature and it's great. And now it's, you know, and it's like 9 o'clock in the morning for me. For them, it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon because they're in India. Okay. And they're like, okay, everything's good. So, you know, bye. And I'm just getting up. Now I start trying to use it. It's broken. It doesn't. Something's not right about it. Something's off on it, this and that. I'm like, you know, if something's not right. I send messages like, this isn't right. This isn't right. I make a big list of everything. And then they come in the next morning. They fix it all. But the whole day, it's like broken. You know, they want they use me as the test person that tests all this crap out. So, and I I try to use you guys if I can to do that because like I said, some of this stuff I can't test myself. Uh, so Jackbox is going to try to help me out. I pre definitely appreciate it. I definitely appreciate the eighty ninety club people. I asked them to do it, and uh, you know I can see when people are on the site what they're doing, what they're looking at. When I asked them that for the next two or three days, they were like. A million UK, you know, people, not a million, but there was like probably 20 or 30 UK people on there uh, looking at stuff, looking up stuff, doing this, doing that. So I definitely appreciate that. They're trying to help me out and they're checking out things. Um, so, you know, they're, they're cool dudes. I want to get over there. Uh, if you guys are super bored and have nothing to do with your life, you go on Twitch, they're having a Doctor Who marathon right now. <laughs> and I think it's actually on right now. Uh, and, you know, it's Doctor Who from the 80s. So you have to be like a super nerd for that. If you're not a super nerd, don't bother because it's like terrible special effects. Terrible dialogue. Terrible acting. It's just, it's fun. Okay. And so you go on Twitch, they have this Doctor Who marathon going on. Uh, if you watch it for 10 minutes, you get entered into a contest where you can get two tickets to go to London for this Comic-Con in London. So, you know, I've been watching it the last couple of days, and if I'm in the office, I'll just turn it on and let it just run, okay? Uh, and then, you know, I'll figure, hey, I'm entered into this contest. You can re-enter every day. And I think it's going on, I don't know, a couple more weeks here in the U.S. So, so we'll see what happens here. And, uh, I mean, that would be great. If I got to go to London, then I could meet some of these guys. Meet some of the 80, 90 guys. Meet some of my buddies at the VW Heritage that came over here to meet me. I'll go meet them and freak them out. Come to their shop. <laughs> and all that kind of good stuff. And then if I'm in England and I'm there, I might have to visit France and see some people over there. Like, like these guys and stuff. They're good guys. Been helping me out. Serial Combi. 
I give them a uh, some props okay, as well. Uh, all these guys, or this hat also says in my that's a little bit easier to see than that little keychain. Um, so you know, we, we help each other out, even the, even in Europe, right? Even in Europe, I mean, the English and the French, right? They've always had that little thing going on, you know, what I'm talking about Jackbox, that thing, but yet, even with that, we've got. You know, helping each other out. These guys help these guys. Those guys help those guys. Both of them help me out. So we all help each other out. It's great. That's part of the whole Volkswagen world is that, you know, it goes beyond borders. It goes beyond rivalries between nations and all this other baloney. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're all human beings. So, you know, there you go. All right, so that's it for today, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. But tell me why. That would help me out. Um, and don't don't say because you're ugly and you smell bad because, you know, you can't actually smell through the camera. So you're just smelling like your house and stuff. And, you know, don't, <laughs> don't say that. You be constructive, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, please like, subscribe, share. And join us. We have uh, people on Patreon right now. We have Eric Schneider. We have Chris Schneider. And we have Peter Benici. We have three patrons. They give us $5 a month. Helps us do our videos. Helps us, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, Costas helps Costas out. I don't know how it helps Costas out yet. Um, and, you know, all that kind of cool stuff. So, I will definitely check that out, Jackbox. I will, I will check out that Dash Kit. That would be cool. You know, so if you if you want to help us and say you're from another country, you can't really buy stuff, you know, that kind of thing from the U.S. because it's a big fat pain or super expensive. I mean, maybe that's why all the British guys weren't actually buying anything because they saw that the shipping was super high. I mean, again, I told them, you know, just it's a test purchase. <laughs> so it's not a real purchase, but whatever. They probably don't they don't know me from Adam, so. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, it helps us out if you, um, if you join Patreon for $5 a month, okay? And I might start giving the Patreon people points, if you guys think that's a cool idea. Give the Patreon people some points. <laughs> Eventually, they'll get enough points, they can buy some stuff, okay, with the points. Uh, so, you know, there you go. It's all part of the fun. Yeah, I know Casas. The taxes are bad. I mean, Casas lives on like this place that everyone dreams of living, like this beautiful island and crystal blue waters, and you know the wonderful, uh, you know, temperate climate. It's almost like the European version of Hawaii, and yet there's always something naughty happening. Like these cats jump off of the roof, and. All, and don't get and don't die and all these bad things happen. His van, somebody like touches his van, his park in his uh, parking lot, in his driveway, <laughs> and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so you know, <laughs> Costas got rough. You know, he's living in Greece and it's it's very difficult over there. No, I'm just kidding. I have no clue. I've never been to Greece, so I I don't know what it's like. A lot of it's islands, though. So Casas is not on an awesome tropical island. Beautiful native girls and all that stuff. Instead, he's in a mainland that has an awesome, blue, beautiful ocean on its border. Okay, so so it's, it's so wet, so much worse. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just met, I'm just teasing you, Casas. He knows that. He is. We talk all the time. All right, so guys, so that's it. I'm done rambling for today. The chat is starting to actually, you know, get some stuff happening. Um, <laughs> I have a house. See? See this guy? I have a house on him, but, you know, it's a whole other story. We, we'll have to watch Costas' channel to learn about that. I keep trying to get him to, you know, fly me over there, and I'll work on his on his van for him. But he doesn't. he's not rich, so that's probably not going to happen. All right, so that's it, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. Like, share, subscribe, get more smiles per gallon. And we're going to see you guys on the next video. All right, guys, thanks for coming, and we'll see you later on.